Check, 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 check. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off Road Podcast. I'm Big Z, and I'm all by myself today. This is going to be a quick, um, another rambling. Um, I've done this once before. Uh, it was well received. Um, I don't like doing these a whole lot because I feel like um, a good podcast requires a two-way conversation. But um, this is kind of just me um, providing an update of what's going on, uh, a little behind the scenes uh, of what I have cooking, um, some things that have been affecting us, and uh, kind of just where we've been for the last month. So uh, we ended uh, 2022 pretty awesome. We uh, did our sales guides. We've done our holiday gift guides. We did a number of great interviews all leading up into going to 2023. Um, and typically what we would do is uh, an end of year podcast that would kind of recap everything. Um, and we probably will still do that. Um, I don't know who I'll do it with. Um, but uh, if you have any suggestions, let me know. Um, maybe it'll be a one way conversation for that one just because it'll let me to allow me to um, exposit expositate expos be expository what's the word for that i don't know what the word is for that i'm not smart enough the uh the idea of recover uh kind of just re recovering the year and the changes that we've had there's been a lot of uh, changes in our industry over the last year some for the good some for you know not so good um but uh i always think it's important to look back and and understand what's actually happened um and what kind of where it's pushing our industry to um and uh so we'll, pr we'll probably start uh getting ready for that as well another one we would normally do around this time is what utv to buy in the year we're going into so 2023 um i'll probably start doing that one here shortly um, I think that's always a good topic. Um, I think that might be one that we do live and have people, you know, kind of give us their opinions. Um, maybe start the episode with my opinions and then bring everybody else in and, and get their thoughts. Um, but as far as like where we've been for the last month, so if, if you've been uh, paying attention, if you've uh, been jonesing for another podcast, obviously um, <clears throat> we haven't been around for a month on the on the podcast. And, you know, that comes down to a number of factors uh, for me on the back end, kind of the behind the scenes stuff. For one, um, I kind of wanted to take uh, kind of that Christmas to New Year's time off and spend some time a little bit more focused on my family and, you know, uh, paying attention to them. Um, this last month also was a lot of time me dedicating to traveling to my kids wrestling matches, uh, second year wrestling, first year in high school. Um, and so it was kind of a big transition for him to be, uh, pushing himself to the limit and learning what he can and can't do. And, um, you know, as a father that has the opportunity to work from home, I felt it was super important to be there for him at every match and support him and help him grow into a young man. So, <clears throat> um, that's honestly consumed a lot of time. I don't understand how that works, but, uh, you parents that do multi-sports with multiple kids, hats off to you guys. Um, that's a, it's definitely a dedication, uh, of time and hours and, uh, ultimately, uh, pulls you away from other things. So, uh, hats off to those guys that do that, you know, every day of every year and, and take care of their family that way. I respect you guys so much. Um, on the other end of that, uh, I was also, you know, this year I felt really, um, like that winter, uh, blues cabin fever thing kicking in. Um, and so I really tried to avoid it by working my butt off, um, this, uh, so, so for those of you that don't know, side by side guys, is just my consumer facing, um, brand for, you know, the community to interact with my real company is the off-road media group. And <clears throat> what we do there is we, we do basically uh, technology uh, consulting for the off-road industry. So um, when I left my job in 2019, um, obviously I'm bringing 20 plus years of technology and 
implementation experience with me. I wanted to kind of utilize that knowledge in a in a industry that I enjoy. So I brought that to what I do here in the off road industry. Specifically, you know, try to stay focused on the UTV, but basically anything outdoors, any brand that really wants to um, have a community uh, focus and focus on um, supporting our industry through great products and great people and great service. So uh, this last month, I've got several hundred hours worth of client work under my belt. Um, And so uh, when you do that, uh, obviously, anyone that works nine to five or, or more and then tries to uh, get out on the weekends to ride or in the afternoons or whatever, you know that um, work takes up a lot of that time and it's hard to always uh, find time to get out and do stuff, let alone run uh, an online brand, create content, um, interact with the community and all that stuff. Uh, so anyways, uh, several hundred hours of, of, uh, consulting work under my belt this month. And that kind of consumed it when you stack that with kind of like the family life and everything else, there just really isn't very many hours left in the day. Um, and you usually dedicate those to some sort of, uh, amount of sleep. Uh, so that's what I've been doing and none of this is an excuse. So I just want to make sure that everyone doesn't think I'm trying to play the excuse game here. I'm just trying to keep everybody informed of what's going on and why you haven't heard from us in the last month. Um, and, uh, so anyways, that, uh, effort to work, uh, forward through those, uh, consulting hours is going to definitely continue within the next, um, few months, uh, where we try to, uh, completely pay off all of our debts, pay off all of our bills, all those things like that, and just get caught up from the whole we kind of dug ourselves into last year. But really what it is, is an effort on my end to, uh, get my family to a point where we can buy a new UTV. So for a long time, we've been, you know, sitting on this UTV, what we call Uncle Ben's Razor, um, 2016 Turbo. Uh, great car, no problems. It's treated us really well. But, uh, you know, if we want to stay relevant, if we want to stay um, with modern vehicles, with modern products and modern uh, relationships with different vendors and, and brands and things like that, we need to have a newer car that will uh, facilitate both uh, my family, uh, our content generation efforts, um, integration points with different brands, um, things like that. So, uh, but I can't justify spending, you know, 60 grand on a, on a pro R four seater with all the upgrades, right? Like we can't jump all the way into that, especially with um, you know, any concerns we have with the economy and things like that, you know, if that were to happen that we, we wouldn't want to dig ourselves into a hole that way. So, um, I'm looking for a UTV, um, looking for ways to fund that and, and make sure that we're not, uh, you know, doing it irresponsibly. But, uh, so hopefully, um, you know, if, if, if I had my druthers, um, I'd probably do, uh, you know, well, obviously if I had my, had no money, wasn't the option, it would be the pro R, but, uh, since that's twice the price of everything else, um, I was kind of thinking of, of going a little bit different route and exploring what it means to have, um, uh, a very capable naturally aspirated car and then upgrade it to be a force induction car. So my thought process there was, you know, can we take something like a KRX four seater and really bring the beans and make that thing competitive um not competitive like not competitive like racing competitive but competitive in that um you know it can it can deliver the fun factor and be just as capable as all the other turbo cars uh when it means going on group rides or going to the dunes or mountain riding or anything like that i think there might be a cool storyline there um i also like all the room that the krx has i like the shape and i like the the build quality and all that stuff. Um, And I'm going to get a lot of naysayers about that. Obviously, we talk a lot about sports side by sides and, um, you know, X3s and turbos and upgrades and all that stuff. But I think there's a lot of us, the, the, the market itself is, is mostly naturally aspirated machines. And most of the market is not the Southwest. So I don't know, I find it interesting to maybe follow that direction. Um, I, I really kind of wanted to do a uh, Can-Am Commander, uh, but what I found is it's just too small and uh, I need a lot of cabin room and for my family and everything. And uh, when we take trips with equipment and all that stuff, it, it just was a little bit too small. 
Um, another one I considered, obviously, just getting another Razor. Um, but at this point, I think that uh, that storyline is a little bit played out. So maybe this year, you know, we'll see the resurgence of the Razor. Maybe Polaris will actually drop their XP update and, and come out with their new body lines and, and all that stuff. Um, but from everything we've seen um, in the patents and in the rumor mill is that, you know, that's going to continue to be that 1000 uh, cc d- uh, twin cylinder engine and not really anything more. But that being said, um, you know, they could update their Pro XP line and, and um, turbo line, right? They could come out with their triple and, and really supp- surprise the industry that they, you know, are still willing to play. But one of my bigger concerns there is that, you know, with Polaris dropping out into the racing program, letting all their athletes go to Can-Am was kind of a big surprise this uh, over the new year. So um, these race programs typically uh, are seasonal, um, not necessarily year to year, but a bunch of racers, you know, announced their transition to Can-Am right at New Year's basically. And so it was kind of a big, big surprise to see that happen. A lot of top tier athletes that uh, traditionally have been kind of staples for Polaris have now uh, joined t- team Can-Am. So I don't know what's going on with Polaris. I don't know if they're going to be kind of like removing the dollars from the racing pool while they regroup. Um, it seems like they're fully invested in the pro R program. Um, but, but at the same time, we don't really see a lot of money being thrown at it. I mean, there's a lot of R and D going on with, you know, the top tier race programs, but, and there's a lot of them showing up to hammers this year, but, uh, but I'm not seeing like as a company, a lot of backing, um, where I thought there would be going into um, hammers and the desert racing scene. Obviously, they haven't been a player in short course for a long time. Obviously, they haven't really uh, pushed anything outside of um, kind of that millennial culture shift. Um, And then desert racing, but but they haven't really been performing in desert racing. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. um, You know, what they're doing there. Uh, especially if you look at like, I've posted a few times on the new build, the uh, Chris and Matlock's getting on her car being one of the top shelf, uh, factory Polaris racers. Um, you know, they've raced their factory cars for a couple seasons now. And while they've done well, they haven't really done, you know, extremely well. And, and so it's interesting to see them shift off the factory chassis and go to uh, a fully built chassis, um, which, by the way, is going to save them several hundred pounds of weight on the chassis. Um, it, may, it may ultimately cut almost a third of the weight off that car. So the guys over at New Line are building her a completely custom car built off the Pro R uh, platform. Obviously, for racing, they have to adhere to all the mounting points and all that stuff. But uh, the chassis itself looks amazing. Um, they're doing a lot of weight saving techniques on the car that people might not realize. Um, but it's very cool. Can't wait to see that car, uh, progress. Um, you know, I talked when I was at the mint 400 and we talked a little bit about, uh, when I was talking with, uh, Jim Beaver and, uh, Brittany Cardone about the, the way that they set the cars up with the weight distribution, the tires in the back, the fuel cells, all that stuff. And we had made a comment about, you know, looking forward to see how the how the racers adapt over time and where they move the weight on the Pro R. And uh, yeah, it's definitely been interesting to see that happen. And the new cars definitely do not look like the cars last year. So um, that'll be something for for those guys that enjoy following racing to look at, uh, recognize, you know, how things have changed. Um, and maybe we'll do a follow up. Maybe we'll do a podcast with somebody, um, a car builder or somebody and talk about those, um, the effects of doing that kind of stuff. Anyways, um, back to what I was saying, uh, picking a car, you know, if I can keep, um, the consulting hours up and everything, I can justify the purchase. And, and so, you know, would I love to have, let's just say a turbo RR cam max, you know, fully built and everything else. Sure. Um, I still haven't sat in a Can-Am X3 that I felt comfortable in. So maybe that's a, maybe that's a storyline to follow. You know, how can we make this more like an upright seating car, like a Razor or something? 
that'd probably you know blow up the canine guys they'd probably get all pissed off at me um what else would there a general i really like generals um but i feel like you know that platform's played out quite a bit um you can make them look cool but you're never really going to get a ton of power out of that motor and trans um so i don't know what else would there a talon talons are cool talons are fun with the shifting um they just don't have a lot of room and with my kids now being getting uh, older they're officially teenagers now um they're and one of them's like a giraffe so he's got like really long legs and and tall torso and um so we we leg room and, and passenger comfort super important so i guess this all kind of goes into that topic of what's utv to buy in in 2023 so this will be kind of an important uh, uh inter um uh, precursor to that episode i guess um anyways I, I was just going through the list of cars you know and a pro xp would be super cool um but i feel like that's a boring story for everyone um a turbo r would be a super cool story but they're just a, such a premium um and stuck on the old power platform though there's plenty of partners to work with to, to tell a story of how to put power in that car um I don't know. I just felt like, you know, the KRX is like the underdog and the one that doesn't get talked about enough because it's really a great car. And when I went out of Sand Hollow for UTV takeover this last year and, and met with the Craftworks guys um, and, and saw that you couldn't have power in that car if you just, you know, buy the kit and, and bolt everything on. Um, and that was a conservative tune. You know, you could you could go throw a roost with with Maxillas with um, uh, Maxillas Rockzillas, sorry, um, and and have a, a great time and keep up with all the cars. So, um, I think that would be kind of cool to kind of just play that story out and see what happens. Um, work with maybe some cage builders and and do some some cool custom stuff there. Uh, I think it'd be interesting to see you know if we could work with some portals and see what actually because basically if you talk to anybody about portals they're always saying portals are for rock crawling not for anything high speed or long term um i think it'd be cool to kind of put a set of portals through the torture test you know get some four inch portals uh some dual idler uh portals and put them through the ringer on mountain riding uh dune riding um you know trail riding getting this stuff uh kind of kind of really see what does work and doesn't work. I think that'd be a kind of a, you know, like actually prove it, not just people talking um, and see what they are capable of doing over the long term, like a full season of variable riding. Um, I think that'd be cool. I've seen portals on the dunes. I've seen portals in pretty much every uh, niche of riding, but I haven't heard anyone actually report back that they've lasted and were not, you know, a hassle to deal with. So um, I think it'd be cool to find that out. Um, I think doing some custom lighting and, and sound work would be cool. No one really does a lot of that content. Um, I, I come from a, a background of doing full produced, uh, stage shows where we do front of house sound and light rigs and, and speaker rigs and digital mixing and all that stuff. I think it'd be kind of cool to bring my take, my perspective of that into the car. Um, maybe making it uh modular where we could do competition sound and at the same time take out you know the oversized subwoofers and everything and have a everyday sound system with a kind of a modular setup i think that'd be kind of cool um but anyways uh looking for a new car looking for ways to make that uh pan out and become a content generator for you guys a discussion point for the podcast um and then also just a more capable rig to take out to shows and be able to do more things um, so if anyone out there has a hookup on a car and wants to work with me, just let me know. Uh, we'll talk. The other thing would be what's coming up this year. So events, um, I'd like to get out to Sandsport again and be more integrated there. I think that's a cool show. Um, and a lot of cool people down there, a lot of cool opportunities to connect. Um, obviously takeover has been a huge part of our history. So, working with those guys um to generate content and uh get their like so i don't i people don't realize a lot of people don't know that i i i do all the web work for them i do a lot of the technical side of stuff for them um so those shows will obviously be cool uh those hours uh hours those dates should be dropping soon i would assume 
there's a lot going on behind the scenes with TakeOver that nobody knows about. Um, and so all those people that are getting frustrated um, realize that the people that run that are normal people like you and I that have day jobs, that you know work nine to five, have families, have kids sports to take care of, all that stuff, and put on a huge show that takes up, it's a whole, you know, it's another one and a half jobs on top of what they do. So give them some breathing room. They'll come out when they're when they're ready. Um, and then, you know, the reasons for all that will ultimately become, you know, public and people will understand why, what, what, why the delays. Um, and then, you know, some of the racing, um, I'm going to be working with my boy, George Hamill on some things. Uh, we we're working hard on some technology stuff to kind of help push our sport forward when it comes to, um, event coverage. And, uh, I think I'll be heading down to Las Vegas for the mint, um, again this year uh but this time in a more official supportive role where i'm working with those guys to help produce the show for some of the race teams um so look forward to some behind the scenes content there um what else we have um i'd like to get to the california 300 you know maybe with the work on the mint 400 that'll lead into that but uh, the 300 is something I'm interested in just because it's a whole new desert race. Um, and the fact that uh, the Martellis are pushing this triple crown idea where you can um, try to win all three or, or get points at all three, stuff like that. I wish I was at Hammers this week, um, but that leads me into... Uh, so before I jump off, um, events for the rest of the year, I'm really interested in you know maybe some of these other events that don't get as much attention, maybe some of the Expos. Uh, maybe some of the, these like, um, you know, group ride events, things like that. Uh, so if you, if you have one that you're interested in, let me know, send me a DM with the info and I'll check it out. Um, I'd like to get up North in Idaho, do some of the, um, insanity fab stuff. Uh, but, um, maybe Dune Fest again this year. Uh, last year I went to Dune Fest, hooked up with MTS, look at that video, um, hooked up with the obsession guys, took a bunch of cool shots for those guys. Um, and then, uh, but the, as far as, uh, what's going on now and why I'm not at hammers, cause hammers was on my bucket list this year to, uh, make sure I got to hammers and, and was able to participate there. Um, in January, part of the reason, you know, things slowed down for me was I was supposed to go into surgery, uh, early January, um, uh, to repair, um, a bunch of abdominal tears, um, that have happened over the years. Uh, to a point where it, it, it's a medical issue now. Um, and uh, that got pushed back to early February. Um, and then that's now scheduled for this Friday. So the recording of this is February 1st on Wednesday. I'll be in surgery. Um, I'll probably be coming out of surgery by now on Friday. So um, I'll be recovering over the weekend and watching Hammers online. Um, so you can go online and subscribe to Ultra 4's um, online coverage and you can um, watch the entire race and all the different angles there. So that's what I'll be doing from my lazy boy with my iPad watching the King of Hammers. Um, so shout out to everybody that's down there. Uh, a lot of race teams obviously down there, a lot of new cars built uh, for the race. Um, we've been you know sharing some stuff on our on our stories for different different guys that are showing their cars off. Um, but uh, but there's a lot of a lot of teams hoping to start the year off right with a win down at Hammer, so I'm excited to see how that plays out. Um, there's legacy uh, legacy racing. Um, I, I'm wanting to get a little bit more connected to that. I want to see what's going on there. Um, and then ultimately, eventually, I want to get down to Baja and see what that experience is. But um, So anyways, back to the surgery thing. Uh, that'll keep me down for a few days before I can jump back into some more consulting work. Uh, then that'll be pushing me forward into February, uh, until mid February. And then we just found out, um, uh, some news about one of my loved ones that, you know, they may be requiring some emergency surgery here as well. So, um, what we're doing is kind of just keeping an open mind about February and seeing where that takes us. Um, and seeing where, um, you know, the results of some of this, these things medically will, will position us for the year. But, uh, but I'm looking forward to getting out of this winter slump. You know, it's really, like I said, affected me this year. Um, I enjoy 
snow. I enjoy winter. I enjoy um, cold temperatures and, and all that stuff because it makes those spring days better, uh, more amazing, makes those summer days uh, not as horrible. Um, I hate the heat and I hate being cold too, but you know, you can put more layers on. You can't take off enough layers when it's 114 out. So, um, so yeah, I don't know where this episode, you know, is supposed to go. I'm just kind of rambling, but, uh, I, I felt it was important that, you know, after a month of basically being quiet that you guys knew what was going on. So I wanted to make this, uh, podcast real quick, just to kind of get everybody on the, on par with, you know, the schedule that's happening and, um, what I would like to do is get, you know, some feedback from you guys. Who do you want to have on this year? I've got some stuff getting worked out to on the schedule to get some people on the show. Um, I got some, uh, some ideas on, on maybe some topics we can talk about, um, things like that, but I would love to know what you think. So send us a DM, uh, side by side guys, uh, on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, send me a DM. Tell me what you think, what you, what you've enjoyed over the year in 2022, um, maybe some stuff that we've gotten away from that you miss, um, maybe some new stuff that we've never talked about. Uh, obviously there's some been, there's been some talk on people wanting to have shows where they talk about all the nitty gritty stuff that the industry doesn't talk about and stuff like that. Um, but they've done it from a kind of a negative point of view and I, I don't agree with that, but if there's any kind of industry topics that don't get talked about, um, that we can actually have a discussion around, uh, let me know. I would like to know what your thoughts are. Um, and then I've, t- I've alluded to it in the past about maybe doing a live show, like a w- weekly live show on Instagram or something, um, or on Facebook or YouTube or something. Um, I think that is very much a possibility here in the short term. Um, I think it's easier to produce, easier to turn around quickly and not have to do editing and all that stuff. And then it brings you guys into the discussion, right? So I would like to know what kind of day you think would be the best what time frame of the day would be best on Pacific time. So please uh, keep that in mind. In the past, I've talked to people, they've always said either like Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday um, at variable different times during the day. Um, Does, you know, work lunchtime at work work better for people or does dinner time, does before dinner time, after dinner time, like what works for you guys? Um, and I'd like to like to bring you guys into the conversation more. Um, and I've tried Zoom and I've tried uh, Discord and I don't really like how any of them work. So I think the best way to do it would just be to utilize the natural um, live options that the platforms have and just keep it simple. Uh, I think this year is going to be about while I'm developing complex technologies with other guys, that implementation um, on this side of stuff should be simple and easy and not uh, drag me down. So um, I think that's the best way to do it. Uh, so let me know, let me know when you want to do it, what platform you're on, um, and what what works best for everybody. Um, quick update on dialed off road. I had mentioned about, um, you know, trying to start that, uh, retail brand, um, to support, to, to not only be a retail shop to make money, but to support our industry. Um, that has been delayed just due to time, not having enough time, but my perspective on that has also changed. So the intention is not changed. So the intention is to build an, an apparatus that supports our industry and a way to make a living while doing it. Um, as many of you may not know, podcasting doesn't make money unless you have a bunch of sponsored ads on it. <clears throat> um, and up to this point, you have enjoyed an ad free experience. But, um, that may have to change soon. Um, so who would you recommend as a sponsor for the podcast? I'd love to know your perspective. I think having a sponsor that is directly associated with an individual product would be a bad idea. I think having a a sponsor that would be, um, more service oriented or industry wide, um, and not so specific might be a better idea. Um, just so that we can talk freely about products and about implementation and, and brands and stuff without having to feel like we're in conflict with the sponsor. Um, but back to dialed, uh, my perspective on dialed has changed. I've got a, a, a much bigger idea of how I'm going to implement technology into our industry and create an ecosystem where, um, you know, we can grow, but also support each other. 
Um, and so my, sorry, my, <laughs> sorry, my system, uh, decided to lock up on me. Um, and so that has leaked into my, my ideas for dialed. Um, uh, and so my thought was if I'm going to create a retail experience, um, that is supposed to benefit the industry, I shouldn't be competing with the industry. So dialed off road is in the middle of transitioning from a retail experience to being a more of an aggregation system. So the idea being that um, you, it's a retail experience where you can find uh, the products you're looking for um, in a much bigger scope, not just limited to the things we have on hand or drop shipping. Um, a much bigger scope to where we kind of cover all the products and all the niches and all the writing groups and all the writing styles, uh, but that we connect you with a with a link to the brands that you want to purchase from. So the idea is if you go to Amazon and you look up, um, let's just say, what can I use in my office as an example here? Um, I don't know. I don't have anything unique or not unique, I should say. All right, so if you go on Amazon and you look at this, I'm holding up a blue mouse, a uh, computer mouse, and you go to look to buy that mouse, um, you're gonna find that you have probably 50, 100 different opportunities to buy something from somebody. Uh, they're all the same item or variations of the item, uh, but they're connecting you with different sellers. Amazon's not typically selling them. Um, they do have fulfilled by Amazon, but the idea is that um, they make money off of selling for other people, right? Well, my thought was let's bring that to the off-road industry, but in a less um, corporate, uh, greedy way. So Dialed Off-Road will be in a place of education. It'll be a place where you can get um, educated on what you need to buy, what you want to buy. And then it'll get, provide you an opportunity to uh, purchase that from somebody local to you or from a brand that you respect and want to buy from. So, um, so if you go to, if you go to dialed off road and you, and you want to buy, um, let's just say some Rockzilla tires, right? Some 35 Rockzillas, you can go online to dialed. You can see, you know, a bunch of information, a bunch of education material around it, some media that's been collected. Um, and then you can see the list price, um, you know, who, who you could buy it from. Uh, there may be a list of, let's just say five, 10, 15 different companies you can buy from. And then hopefully the idea would be that you would, you would see their price, their inventory selection, their shipping to where you're located, um, and, uh, be able to purchase the item. What? in a way that makes economical sense for you and in the way you want to support the industry. So let's just say uh, I'm looking for these Rockzilla tires. Obviously, um, they're big and bulky and heavy. Shipping on them may be super expensive from one uh, vendor, but you know maybe another vendor you can just drive 10 minutes and go pick them up. Or maybe there's a vendor that is doing a promotion with free shipping, or maybe there's a, uh, a blowout sale on, on them, you know, with a vendor that's a state away and also including free shipping, like it, it'll educate your purchasing decision. And then, you know, as far as monetizing that, obviously a lot of upfront costs to develop that. But, uh, the idea would be that, you know, we get that referral, uh, money from, from the sale and, uh, and not price gouging it. So like, you know, we're not trying to get half the referral, half the margin from the dealer or anything like that. It would just be a simple flat rate. And, um, you know, maybe there's opportunities for brands to advertise or to have preferred placement or things like that, where it's um, a natural advertising uh, mechanism where it's not offensive to the consumer. Um but the idea would be to always provide value in each direction. So it wouldn't be just a pure money grab for me. It would be, I want to provide value to the consumer. I want to provide value to the dealer. I want to get, I want the consumer to feel good about their purchase with education and opportunity. And I want the dealer to feel good with the fact that they got a new sale from a new revenue stream that they didn't have before. And then also provide them an opportunity to um, maybe invest and grow in where they, um, you know, maybe fell flat online or on social or whatever. 
anyways, that's kind of the summary of that. Um, so there's a bunch of work that has to go into that. Um, obviously, that's not something you can just go out and buy. That's not something you can just go download and install. So there's some development work to be done there. Uh, but the idea is that, um, yeah, that I want Dialed to be a brand about education, about opportunity, and really be an opportunity for you to, to feel like you've really dialed your rig in the way you wanted to, and also supported the industry while doing it. So um, lots of work there. So I don't foresee this happening quickly, um, especially if I'm doing a lot of consulting and a lot of traveling and things like that. But, uh, but it's, it's in the works. So stay tuned to that. I may launch um, a basic retail experience where you can support it with maybe some apparel sales or something like that, or maybe some dropship uh, opportunities. But I think at the, at the meantime, um, my focus is on currently supporting the, the brands that I'm consulting for, uh, as well as looking forward to the days where I get to come out and uh, be with you guys at events and at rides and, and things like that. So um, I've rambled quite long enough. Uh, I figured this was 10 minutes and it's already over 35. So, um, you know, like I said, send me a DM, let me know your thoughts. What should we do this year? What things can, you know, we do better? Um, you know, what kind of content do you really actually enjoy versus just consume? Um, things like that. And, uh, who should we talk to? What brands should we connect with? Um, what events have we missed? Should we go to? Um, all that kind of stuff. Just talk to us. Send us a DM. Let me know what's going on in your world. Um, you now know my world. <laughs> it's been pretty slow. And uh, and so I'm looking forward to things picking up, getting warmer, and um, being able to, to be with all you guys. So yeah, connect with me. Connect online. You can connect with the, the podcast on Spotify, iTunes, <clears throat> iHeartRadio, all those places. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube. You can give us a subscribe and a thumbs up. Uh, you can connect with us on Facebook or on Instagram. Um, I'm on, uh, TikTok every once in a while. Uh, but yeah, connect with us, be a part of the, be a part of uh, what we're doing here and let us know how we can do better. But, uh, but until the next time post-surgery, peace.